crash test safety and other kinds of safety, all of it, the best accidents, no accident, but what good is having a great rating if uh, you can't say anything about it? And if it uh, doesn't mean anything because it's been too watered down, I went ahead and found uh, Paul Foss, a uh, contributing writer at uh, cleantechnica.com to help us out and understand a little bit of history here. Paul, thank you for joining me. We've got this here, uh, this fun tweet that you made, uh, what, four years ago now, uh, oh, four and a half. Instead of focusing on NHTSA, the real story is why two years after coming out, the uh, Institute for Highway Safety uh, hasn't crash tested the best-selling car by revenue. What's that about? So what, what happened here? Yeah, the, the Insurance Institute uh, does these crash tests, and it seems like most cars, you know, the car comes out and they, um, you know, they test it relatively quickly. I found out by, actually, I don't remember how, what my sourcing on this was since it was four years ago, but someone did tell me uh, that the reason they didn't test them for so long is that they couldn't get them. I believe they need five vehicles to do the test. And most manufacturers, you know, probably um, prioritize that. I think we know just like Tesla didn't prioritize uh, Hertz vehicles, Tesla doesn't do things like every other manufacturer. So they, they put in the order and the Model 3, uh, you may or may not remember from 2016, there was a 400,000 vehicle backlog and and they probably didn't put in their order on that first night so by the time i made this tweet 2 years ago you can see they responded that same day oh we're going to begin these crash tests next week but uh but i heard the issue was they couldn't get the five vehicles that would that would make sense yeah i mean i hope tesla is kind of corrected for that because uh the insurance institute is one of the better tests some of the other tests 90 percent or so of the people all get five stars so it isn't very differentiated on this test only a few cars get the top safety pick and the top safety pick plus so it really is a, a higher uh, bar and and more valuable and i don't think the model y took as long to get out it, it definitely wasn't two years from when that came out when it got its first uh, its first testing. Uh, you can also see uh, Safayan said, will we be able to say oh, they're the yeah. safest? And uh, because I, I know sometimes Tesla or others try to make claims about things and uh, these various institutes say, no, you can, you know, you're only allowed to say it's a top safety pick or this plus you can't go into the details of the test and say well these were we had the lowest force they, they really don't like that elon actually responded to that and said well said uh i did look after elon said that and the institute never answered that question so mm -hmm. um you know they didn't really want to address that right when i think it was nitsa that was the one that got pretty uh, upset when Tesla went out and said, we got the highest score ever on the test. And they said, no, no, no. You tied with every other, with almost every other car out there because we only go, our rating only goes up to like 80. Who cares if you scored a 95? Doesn't matter. You're at that top level. There is no A plus in this test, or I guess even an A would have been nice, but it's crazy imagine the valedictorian uh saying well i got you know i shared the title with 80 percent of the students that would be ridiculous so now we're looking at this uh this report that came out we can see it's the top safety pick uh despite tougher metrics uh how have the tests changed over time um, my understanding is the the major thing is the the moderate overlap. So that's when you have a head-on collision, but it's not exactly head-on. It's not the small overlap where you just clip them, but you 
you uh, have an overlap of about 50%. And that is, I guess, a fairly common accident. And it's also, you know, a very deadly accident in the real world. So they said, hey, we should start testing something that's causing a lot of deaths. I would I would agree with that. I have seen, in terms of accidents I've actually seen, I have seen very few full head-on collisions that were much past about 20, 30 miles an hour, you know, rear-ending someone on the highway kind of thing. But when it comes to small overlap and, and medium overlap, boy, I've seen a number of those I would rather not see. And it is a different test. Because obviously, different if you're situation. going towards someone, you usually get a chance to at least uh, turn the wheel somewhat, you know, um, it, it would be very... But I think it's possible it's actually worse for you if you have that small or moderate overlap than if you did the full head-on, because at least the full head-on, A, that's what the vehicle is kind of designed for, and, you know, you have the whole vehicle to absorb uh, the weight and you have to absorb that, where when you just have a small overlap, uh, the whole weight of the car, you're trying to stop it with just maybe 25% uh, of the front end. Now, I'll tell you, when I looked at early small overlap tests, my old Nissan Quest uh, did not do well in that. It was not designed for it. The model year after mine, they added another bar up front to give some deflection on a small overlap. And then I, when making the decision to buy the Tesla, I showed my children the small overlap for the Nissan Quest and the small overlap for the Model Y. And the Model Y, because of the way it's designed, completely deflects. It com So it's even better, I think, than a full head-on because the car doesn't come to a complete stop. It can move past whatever it hits by just deflecting to the side a bit while you are mm -hmm. wrapped in airbags, which are crazy. Where a moderate overlap, yeah. it probably can't just probably go can't, off to the side. It probably, probably has to absorb. Yeah. And that's why they keep updating the tests. If you were to take a 20-year-old car and try and test it again, you might not like the results. If you yeah, look at uh, airbags, you know, they, they started putting knee airbags in cars. And I don't know if you've noticed, but they've removed them. That's no longer a mm -hmm. thing. Because... For the airbag engineers, I had a chance to talk with Kenneth, a friend of mine in Michigan who is a retired airbag engineer. Um, he was tell I asked him, I had a lot of airbag questions. And one of them was, could they, you know, what airbags do they add? Why, why did they take them out? And he said, cause more injuries than it prevented. The restraints are sufficient. If you're wearing a seatbelt, you don't want a knee bag. It'll hurt your legs more than help them. I thought that was very interesting. The biggest question I had for him was, was the middle seat removed from the Cybertruck because the screen would prevent an airbag? And he said no, and he showed, he showed me how they would design one that would go up and over. Mm -hmm. shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. It would be kidney bean shaped, more similar to the one you see on the passenger side, which also goes up and back. So all that works. Uh, any other thoughts on testing we should know? Now, these results, I assume, are very good. It says they're going to be testing their Model 3 soon. Uh, anything we should know about testing that we're missing? No, I, I, I don't have anything else uh, for this one. Should they test at even higher speed? Should we be doing tests at 60 and 70 miles an hour? It'd be more exciting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. it as a, a Tesla fan, we tend to think we have the, you know, the safest vehicles out there. Uh, sure, there's part of me that, that says that uh, I would like an even tougher test uh, so that, you know, maybe Tesla would be the only one that would pass it. But uh, A, there are a lot of forces that would be against that. Um, and, uh, you know, these things are done for the whole industry. They're not, they're not done just for Tesla's benefit. And I think it's interesting. The The big takeaway, and I shared this on a previous video, is that EVs generally are going to be safer. You've got more crumple zone. You've got better uh, side intrusion protection due to the structural nature of the battery pack, even if it's not a structural pack. Uh, and then, of course, you've got uh, the fact that your center of gravity is so low that these become real hard to tip over. Not impossible. Nothing's impossible. You get 
too out of control. Uh, and of course, then you've got that uh, highway insurance group in Europe who went ahead and used fireworks to uh, to make their Tesla blow up. That was a real a real low point in uh, public discourse, I thought. But uh, I think these are these are great cars, and other brands have awfully good safety too. Rivian, both of their models scored top safety pick without the plus. Still very good. Still likely safer than any car you could have bought even 15 years ago. So uh, I appreciate that the standards are getting more strict. I think that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, in the comments, I guess, uh, what do you think about the safety and how important is it to you? Uh, Paul Foss, uh, contributing author for Clean Technica. You can go check out his work at cleantechnica.com and you can find him on X as well because, you know, that's what he does. Links in the description. Uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it into them in the comments below and stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop. <laughs>